Today's video is part two in our four-part series on how to defend everything. Today's topic is collar chokes. Taught by Bart Arts from the Netherlands, he shows a classic way of dealing with collar chokes, both from the guard and from the mount. Lots of great details. If you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe. We are closing in on 50,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And you can help push us over the edge. Or if you'd like to support the channel in a more direct way, we've got some great swag over at artofskillgear.com. And also I've got instructional courses at rickellis.com. Collar chokes, let's check it out. Let's go to the next topic, Roy, please. Okay. So we are still in the guard. And now we're gonna use the gi because we're wearing one. So I'm gonna cover a little bit of uh, cross choke defenses. The first hand is always gonna be in the collar. That's really hard to prevent. And it's actually pretty good that he has the hand here because now I have two hands to just defend this arm. If there's two arms like this, if it's out, I have two arms to try to control. So the first hand is not a problem. The problem will happen when the second hand comes in. So what I will do is I will shadow the other arm with my forearm and with my hand. And my free hand is gonna be here on the wrist. I, lo I love to have it like this, but you can also hold it like this. And now if he tries to go for the cross choke, try it please, it's really hard. Whenever he tries to go under, I block with my elbow. Whenever he tries to go over, I use my straight arm. And of course he will try to go over and he will try to cross the center line and go for the armbar. So we're gonna cover all that stuff. But first things first. So I check the other arm. I don't want this arm to go in and finish the choke. The other hand is on his wrist. And now there's two options. He's either coming over. When he comes over, I grab the wrist. I control and I bend. Now it's really hard to pull your arm out. Can you try? It's hard because the wrist is bent. So that's option one. Option two is when he goes underneath. I will slow him down with my forearm. He will try to reach for my gi, and I will redirect and grab, and grab again. So this is the first exercise. So he tries to go on top, I let go, grab, and I twist. If I don't twist, it's easier to pull the arm out, okay? One very important note, so he grabs, if I keep my straight arm for too long and he crossed the center line and I keep my arm like this and I keep my arm like this, he will go for the armbar because he creates the angle for the armbar. So the moment I feel he's going over 12 o'clock, I will let go of this hand and I will grab here. I can grab the gi, I can fold it. And now I don't let go because the moment I let go, he will just, boom, he will just go in on the top like this and yeah, finish the choke. So from the top once more, Shadow like a sensor on this biceps, and my hand is here, ready to, to catch. He goes on top, I feel that he's here, I grab, I grab, I fall. Second one, he goes underneath. I block with my elbow, but I'm not winning, but I'm slowing him down, I'm slowing him down, I'm slowing him down, I'm grabbing, and I'm grabbing like this. So that's a little bit of the game. He tries to go under, he tries to go over, and whenever he tries to do something, my hand is here to grab and to control. Okay, so this looks easy. Maybe it is easy because you did it before. So uh, let's start with this. Okay, over, under, grab it with two arms. One, two, three. So the concern is not the first hand. This probably gets in. It's very important where this arm is. If I'm just controlling the bicep and this arm is resting on my lap or it's somewhere here floating and he goes on top, I'm too late, the choke is there. So my hand is here. Traditionally, I think it's, it's grabbed. I like to have it like this with my thumb and just like a, like a shield here, like this. The moment Roy goes over, I cannot hold it like this because my arm is in danger, so I go here. I can grab the fabric, I can grab the arm. This is a nice little detail to fold the hand like this so he can't retract. Now, from the other one, when he goes lower, I will slow him down and I will try to, you see the same hand, it grabs the wrist and it grabs the floor. Now, of course I'm gonna be late. So let's say that Roy goes under and I slow him down, but he's able to grab my gi. What does he need for a good cross choke? 
he needs his hands to go deep in the collar. And then his forearms are going to block my arteries. So I'm going to block the elbow. I'm going to swim my arm through. And I'm going to create this frame here. And a frame here. Now please try to choke, Roy. There's no choke. You see that I have two hands on my head. If I just insert one frame, I'm out of choke danger. But his choke can create a, a headlock. So, so when you twist, yes, I feel it on my neck. So by holding the other side of my head and bringing my elbow to my knee, now there's no headlock. So again, I'm here. Hand is just here. Everything is super loose, super relaxed. He tries, tries to go over or under, short under. And I slow him down, but he's in my key here. Don't try to go here where the wrist will meet because there's not so much space. You, I go where the elbows are. And I just bring my hand in, not like this, because it will choke through my arm. I go all the way up to my head like this. I push my head, I'm here. And very important, I go to the center. Don't be here because he will probably take my back because I create an angle. The second option is when he goes on top. He goes here and he grabs the fabric. Now I have to block the elbow on the other side and I have to go like this and I have my frame. And again, it's not really um, a choke, but it's a crank, it's a neck crank. If you apply it, I will feel pain in my neck. So I just post my hand on my forehead and I post it on my knee. I could even go here if I want, in the diagonal. I'll please try to choke and there's no choke again. So of course the first one is safer, but against a good opponent, it will happen that you are too late and they will just go on the top and they will just boom, they will be here. Now my other arm goes through and I have my frame. If he goes underneath and I'm slowing him down and he grabs, I'm blocking the elbow, I go under and I have my frames right here. If he tries to slide deeper or tries to apply the choke, it's nearly impossible. Yes, let's have, have a try. So the top one and the bottom one. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's go to the final move in this uh, cross choke defense. And um, this is something in Jiu Jitsu that I always love doing. I can remember going to Thailand and to different countries to train. And I would always pick the biggest guy in the room and I wanted to spar with the guy. Never to try to beat the guy because maybe somebody is 50 or 60 pounds heavier. But always in mind like, okay, I want you to mount me or whatever position, I just want to see your attacks. I want to see if I can neutralize everything. I can see if I can survive. And that's a big part of Jiu-Jitsu is surviving. And especially when you are younger or when you are less athletic or older or maybe uh, not, as, not as big, not, not as strong. Um, and it frustrates people. And of course you need your offense too. You need your sweeps, you need your controls, you need your submissions. But this is a game I always love to, to do. So we go back to the cross grab. I block the biceps. The other hand is always here. It's never here on the floor or it knows that it has a job. When he goes underneath, I will slow him down and he tries to choke me and I will grab the arm with two hands. If he goes on top, I will grab and I will grab like this. When he is too deep, he go, he's going under and he finds my gi. I will always go over the bottom arm, under the top arm. Never try to go like this, because he can just block with his arm. He just brings his arm up. Can you bring it up? And I can't reach. So I go like this. This is the good way to have a frame. The moment that Royce goes uh, again, he goes on top and he grabs the gi. Okay, from here, bottom arm, top arm. So I have to go over the bottom arm, under the top arm. This is my frame. Is this enough? No, because there's a crank. So I support my head against my own knee. And now there's no choke. Now the last one. Let's say he goes underneath, but he has this deep grip. So the hands are positioned well. If he pulls me tight and he brings his head up, it's done deal. I have to tap. So there's one last option that I can do. The moment that he's deep in with two hands, I grab his key like this. I'm not going deep, I'm exactly here. My pinky is right here. And what I will try to do is I go up, please try to apply the choke. I go up and I pull the key and I go here. Oh. And he will let go of the choke or tap or pass out. So this technique is called a masa pao, like making bread. 
And there's some very important details. So again, he is too deep. Okay, maybe this will not happen. I, I need this arm to be here. If he's too close, I will have to tap. But this is a possibility. I go here with my hand, not too deep, not like this, right here with the pinky. I will go up on my feet. Can you close the bar just a little bit higher, please? Perfect. I will go up on my feet and I will stiffen this arm. With the other hand, I grab the opposite collar and I pull him down and I just stiff arm and when he tries to choke, his choke is not working because he needs to bring me close. My choke is working because my arm is straight. Watch this knee. This knee is super important to push a little bit like this. If the knee is just wide open, he will spin for an arm lock. He will just spin for an arm lock, boom. So I always have to take care of the arm lock. So he's here. I, again, I go over the bottom arm. I grab. I don't have much time. I have to go up on my feet or I can stay low. I prefer to go up. My arm is straight. Try to go for the arm lock, please. He can't. He feels that the angle is not there. And I just straighten my arms. And there is a choke. There is a choke. And he will let go and I will let go. So one last time. So the choke is here. The first grab. I will try to grab the arm like this. This is the best one. If it doesn't work, he's underneath. I will try to go for the frame. Second option. Third option, he's too deep. So I grab and I go up. And from here, I get the slack out and I just stand like this. And I just push. I just push. And he lets go. Right. Let's give it a try. One, two, three. Okay, you're all doing great. We're gonna do the same stuff, but from a different position. And um, maybe this is even cooler because it's from the bottom mount, and it's a position where lots of people fear triangles and arm triangles and cross chokes and arm bars. So it's pretty nice to be safe in this position. So I'm not gonna show you any new techniques. I'm just gonna combine it with, a, with, a, with one upa and that's it. So the first grip is gonna be here. I don't mind this grip. I love this grip. But the second grip is the thing. So again, my hand is here and my arm is here. Don't block with your hand because if he tries to push through and he's strong, he can go through. So I block with my forearm. So it's my upper arm bone that is blocking it. It's skeleton instead of muscles. So when he tries to go over, I can just grab him like this. And it's, again, it's annoying because if you try to free your arm, it's a little bit trapped. And of course, he will be able to pull it backwards, pull it backwards, please, but I go back to the biceps. If he goes underneath, it's the same thing. I slow him down and I will try to grab here. Or when he grabs my gi, I will go for the same thing, for the frame. Now I have the frame, try to make the choke, please. It's not happening. I can use his thigh now instead of my knee. A cool thing is when he grabs and I block the biceps, when he goes over the top, I will grab the arm, I will trap him and I will roll him to the side. Don't be too excited because the moment that you let go is like a karate chop and he finishes you off. So you have to be like this and, and enjoy a little bit your upa or trap and roll and then you look at the guy like, hey, that was cool. And, <laughs> and I, I let go of this arm if you let go of this arm. If he doesn't let go, I don't let go. Because the moment I let go, Boom, he's gonna choke me. So again, so the first level of defense, because here it's very obvious. If I keep my arm stiff like this and he goes over, he will slide to the mount or the S mount and he goes for the armbar position. And this is not good at all. So this arm has to know when it has to go. So this is the clock, 12, one, two, three o'clock. So when he passes 12 o'clock, I just let go. So there's no armbar now. Don't keep your arm here. As soon as he goes over the 12 o'clock, I go here and I can grab on and maybe do the trap and roll. Because the cool thing is he can pull the other arm out, but he cannot pull this arm out. So it's the perfect way to bridge somebody off. Secondly, if he goes on top, maybe he is able to grab something like this, boom. So now, what is my focus? Block his elbow. Bring the arm through. And again, I can use his leg now. Try to make the choke. Or the neck crank, there's no choke of neck crank. If he goes underneath, he tries to go underneath, he enters the gi, I open the other elbow, I go underneath. You see, I'm not entering here, near the wrist, I'm entering near the elbows. I go all the way through, not like this, my elbow has to go all the way through. And I place my palm of my hand on my, on my head like this, and I have the other hand also here. 
Now there's no choke. So this is just a fun game to play. So you give the first hand, and Roy tries to go underneath or on top, and I'm just, I'm just feeling whatever he, he tries to do. He goes on top, no. He goes on the bottom, boom. And I try to go here. If you're here, don't be in a hurry to let go. Maybe what you can do is just let go of one hand and just boom, go like this. This is something I like to do, or maybe with the, with the gi, if you're not allowed in competition to do this. But just if he holds, just give him a little impact like this, and now we're neutral again. Let's try this, one, two, three.